What's going on guys? As you can tell behind me, I now have a front bumper. So, Shout out to uh, Eastern Audio, uh, Nathan Munson, for letting me uh, use his business address to get a ship to. It's a uh, Shonek front bumper. So, uh, yeah. I will uh, get this thing out of the box and show you guys what it looks like. Alright, so it's kind of mounted in there a little bit, but uh, here's what it looks like in the box. Obviously, we'll uh, get it painted, but uh, probably just throw some spray paint on it because, you know, we can't do anything too fancy. But, uh, I'll get it the rest of the way out of the box. And once again, big shout out to Eastern Audio. They uh, also put subs in my truck and it sounds great, works great. So if you're local and you need some good sound system stuff, hit them up. All right, so we'll get that put away in the corner to get put on another day and uh, get started on the motor plate and or get started on putting the engine in and seeing uh, where the motor plate's gonna have to be and measuring for that and getting that ordered. Alright, so I've got the engine in the car, but uh, I'm going to have to uh, raise the mid plate up actually, which it does have uh, another set of holes on there because um, as you can see the, uh, the pan is sitting on the uh, steering rack right now and uh, so yeah, I'm uh, going to move that up real quick and then I'll come back and tell you a little bit more about the engine. We're actually going to have another little issue that I just uh, realized as I was moving the motor plate trying to uh, trying to raise it up. It's uh, already been clearanced a little bit for the uh, steering rack so uh, probably going to have to uh, cut that down a little bit more and maybe drill another bolt hole but uh, we'll get that figured out. So I got the mid plate moved up to the next set of holes. Uh, as you can see it's gonna Definitely have to be changed right there and clearanced and maybe uh, move that top bolt down to a lower hole or Drill another hole. I mean for one of the lower holes on the uh, mount but uh, now I'm going to Go ahead and pull it out with the mid plate and uh, put the transmission on with mid plate and put it in there just to make sure that the uh, Transmission bell housing is actually going to clear 
with it at this height, but uh, it doesn't uh, sit on the sit on the steering rack anymore. So uh, that's good. So we'll see if this will work or if we're gonna have to do some more modifications. I got the transmission on with the mid plate. Uh, I figured while we're here, I'll take a minute to go over the uh, actual setup with the transmission. It's a uh, PTC built 180 first gear uh, power glide. The uh, reed case, as you can see, it's a 10 clutch. And I uh, haven't had any issues with it. It's definitely overbuilt for a stock bottom end deal, but uh, I've always kind of had plans for bigger motors later on. And uh, I also have a PTC converter, which is uh, right over here. It's a PTC 20-2, which is uh, ridiculously loose if you uh, know what those numbers are, but um, it's still a little too tight for this little 4.8. It just doesn't make any torque at all. So uh, I might be installing a, a dump valve setup if I can uh, get one and help with that to keep the keep the RPMs up because kind of part of what keeps these stock bottom end motors alive is uh, keeping them away from making any torque so as you'll uh, you'll see more about that whenever I uh, get that uh, thousand subscriber mark and uh, show you guys all the data from uh, one of the record passes all right so I got the engine and the transmission back in here all together and uh, mounted up on the the mid plate and bolted all in and uh, it looks like we are probably gonna have to drill some more holes because uh, I don't know if you can really tell from the video but uh, the engines at too much of an angle it's like uh, around 60 degree angle and it really needs to be probably more around three degrees but um, I didn't quite get to do that um, I'm not gonna be able to finish it up in this video and get measured for the motor plate and get all that ordered but I figured I'd show you guys the engine anyways and uh, tell you a little bit about it uh, as you can see it is extremely dirty maybe that makes people believe more that it did actually come out of a junkyard and I definitely did not do any cleaning on it at all as you can see and uh, also there's some JB weld built up around the uh, <laughs> the um, the oil dipstick hole because it was uh, leaking out of that so I tried to JB weld around it but that didn't quite work so I'm probably just going to have to plug that and you can also see the uh, return fittings from the old setup on the pan and it's a holly i believe it's 302 2 pan it's the one that can take like uh, up to whatever stroke you want or whatever like 4.25 or some something crazy like that but um i'm probably going to end up changing that to a moroso pan just because the pan gets really close to the flywheel back there and causes issues with the engine diaper and actually ended up tearing the engine diaper up and definitely want to have a a good engine diaper whenever you're trying to make you know 1500 horsepower with a stock bottom end motor but also I've had a lot of people say you know I must have some real crazy heads or I have you know thousands of dollars into port work and stuff like that in order to to make this thing rev to 8600 rpm but as you can see they are completely stock unported I didn't even clean them 706s you can see there's still gunk in there. The E85 cleaned a lot of it out, which I kind of made a joke about in the uh, 1320 video interview, but I really meant it. But <laughs> Also, I actually got permission to release the cam specs from John Bewley, Little John Motorsports Solutions, so I'll show you guys those. I know a lot of people have asked about that, and I'm sure a lot of people will be really surprised, actually, 
Uh, everyone kind of expects to have some crazy, ridiculous cam in order to be going the RPM that it does, but it's actually, it's right here. It's a uh, 227, 233 on uh, 111 plus five and uh, just over 600 lift. So it's really not very crazy at all. And uh, uh, the only reason I'm releasing that is because uh, we plan on making some changes and going a little bit bigger this time for the methanol and bigger turbo and and all that. And uh, also plan on spinning quite a bit higher RPM. So that should be fun and uh, definitely make some interesting sounds that, you know, maybe somewhere up near 9,000 RPM with, uh, <laughs> and uh, also, that's another thing you mentioned. A lot of people say if you go over 7,000 RPM or something like that with the stock rod bolts and you're gonna break it or one of them's gonna break or something like that. But um, these, I'd never even pulled the, the rod cap off. So it's the stock rod bolts, whatever they got torqued to 140,000 miles ago in the factory. And everything is stock ring gap, obviously, because I didn't pull any of that stuff out. The only thing really done to the bottom end is the reluctor wheel was tacked onto the crank just because the 24x ones are known for having some issues with that i guess possibly spinning the reluctor on the crank and on the two-step and stuff like that so we did that and it has a melling 10 296 oil pump it has a ios timing chain um it has johnson short travel lifters uh, st2116 lsr um and it has, has 3 8 push rods. They're just standard wall and stock rockers with a Smith Brothers trunnion kit. And then it has the BTR Ultimate RPM spring kit with the 685 springs and titanium retainers and all that shimmed up to uh, whatever it is for about 650 lift or whatever. And uh, Originally, I had uh, the 660 kit on it that I actually was used just off another car that I had sitting around and That one worked great until I got to about 77 7800 rpm. It started to valve float a little bit So I believe I was actually the first one to use the ultimate rpm spring kit uh, You know customer wise at least and it's worked great and I plan on pushing even farther this year, but uh I'm probably forgetting a few things about the motor uh, but I think that pretty much covers it. I plan on making some changes this year, uh, some upgrades, uh, including the cam, as I mentioned, and uh, hopefully working with a couple other companies on getting some uh, better heads on it and maybe some minor valve train upgrades too, so we can try and spin this thing near 9,000 RPM and uh, just see how fast we can go with it and get farther into the mid fours and try and catch up to Capizzi a little bit. So yeah, I'll uh, show you guys the whole process and if you guys have any questions about the motor or anything like that or any other specs, the only thing that I wasn't really allowed to say before was the cam specs and obviously you see those now. So anything you want to know, I'll let you know. And uh, yeah, maybe I should uh, clean this thing up a little bit since it's treated me so well or maybe not, I don't know. Also another thing that's actually interesting is a lot of people say that you need to have the um, the steam vents that go to all four corners and as you can see I don't I have the ones that just cap off in the back and then the just the front two well, I might end up upgrading that too I might not I don't know uh, yeah let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see and uh, thanks for joining and subscribing and I've picked up 500 likes on my Facebook page and over 100 subscribers since I've started making these little videos so I appreciate it and next video uh, is probably going to be some clips from a race uh, today, actually, in Roswell, New Mexico. I'm going to be heading down there. There's a little cash days tonight. And then tomorrow there is a little no prep shootout deal. And I'm going to be tuning a friend's car. So I'll get some clips of that and post that up. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Also, don't forget, 1,000 subscribers. I'm releasing a data log from one of the record passes. 